Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond, and in this episode I am going to play a solo game of Sanctuary the Keeper's Era by Tabula Games. Now this, what you see here, is a prototype copy, so all the cards and all the texts on them are still a prototype and uh, might change. Uh, so are the rules. I have made myself a little uh, sheet here with the turn order just to have that at hand and you can follow along. And so I'll, I'll start with the rules. Uh, I'll explain them to you and then afterwards I'll just simply start a game and see if I can win versus the enemy AI. So a solo game is played as followed. Uh, it's basically uh, almost the same as the one versus one game. And if you want to see my review where I also explain the rules for the one versus one game, you can check the link in the description below this video or you can click the I in the corner of this video and that will take you there. And I will also put a link there to the Kickstarter of Sanctuary the Keeper's Era because it is currently live on Kickstarter. You can still pledge for a copy of the game. And uh, yeah, there will also be a link in the description below so you can go and check that out. So in a solo game, instead of playing with four sanctuaries, you're playing with three. So you pick one of your sanctuaries that you don't want to use in a uh, solo play and you just put that out of play. I'll just put it here to uh, make it my uh, crystal stash. And you also have your champion as usual and you have your normal deck. You just pick one of the six decks that, uh, that there are in this game and you put all your acolytes and your rituals in the deck and you give that a shuffle. You put the um, Aegis counter on the maximum health, basically, of your sanctuaries, and you take your, age, uh, your Splendor token and put it on the zero track. Now, small correction that I need to make is that in my explanation of the, um, uh, the review of the one versus one game, uh, I said that uh, once the um, Splendor token reaches its peak, uh, because that's the way it is explained in the preliminary rules I got with this prototype, then they become active. But I thought that the peak of the Splendor track was the highest number, which seemed logical to me. So this icon indicates the Aegis track and, and that icon indicates the Splendor track. But having seen the Kickstarter and the explanation on that um, later, which was after I made my video, it became clear that Tabula, Tabula Games meant to have this uh, counter advance all the way down onto the, the, the icon itself and then it will hit its peak and then this ability of your sanctuary will become active for you to use. This also means that I've asked that this spot is actually a spot on the track. It's the peak of the track. It actually has a number. So if this is two, then this is three. Why is that important? Because there are cards, uh, this is the one, that tell you to deal X damage to any unit where X is equal to the splendor value of one of your sanctuaries. So at that point, if you play this card, and that's an Acolyte that comes into play with a Genesis ability, as you can see, then at that moment you're checking your Sanctuaries and you're checking to see uh, which one at that point has the highest Splendor value. So if this Sanctuary was at its peak, then that value would have actually been 3 even though it's not printed on the card. Now, again, this is a prototype, so who knows, that might change or be indicated in a better way somehow. But I just wanted to point that out to avoid confusion. The enemy AI is set up slightly differently. You just pick one of the decks uh, as the uh, opponent and you follow the rules to select the Acolytes to go in its deck. So the enemy only has Acolytes, uh, the champion is removed and the rituals are removed and several Acolytes are also removed. Three types times two cards and six cards are out of this deck as well. And then you have three node cards. Now I just took 
the Sanctuary cards and flipped them over, but a recent stretch goal has actually unlocked uh, in the Kickstarter three cards with unique art on them, with a cool artwork on them, that will function as the nodes. So that's pretty cool. But basically, nodes are not sanctuaries. They're basically the enemy's bases, and you need to attack them. If you manage to attack them undefended and deal them even just one damage, they are destroyed. Okay, and that is your goal, along with destroying the Corruptor. I'll get to that in a bit. So, you can play this game versus the AI enemy uh, in easy mode, which is simply attack all those nodes once and then they're destroyed. You can attack, uh, you can play in normal mode and then you place one life token on uh, the middle node. And that means if I attack this the first time, I remove that life token, but the card stays in the play and then the next time it will be destroyed. And then there's hard mode and then I place two more tokens on all these uh, nodes. So you have one on each three and then you need to attack all nodes twice in order to win. Plus, like I just said, you have to destroy the Corruptor. Now the Corruptor is your enemy. And this uh, box, the um, Lands of Dusk that has the Crass, Mulran and Wall. These are the Wall, this is the Mulran. They have this Corruptor, Nenzath, the Soul Defiler. And uh, it also has four Constructs, which I will show you in a bit. The other deck, the Lands of Dawn, right here, have a different Corruptor and four different Constructs. So both of them have a different uh, enemy, which is pretty cool. And if you get both, of course, you'll have them all. So what does the Corruptor do? The Corruptor is basically a very strong enemy unit. It's not that strong to, in its attack. It's got three attack and two health, so that's okay. But it starts out with a plus one token, a fierce token, and a reaper token. So oh, it's a zealous token, excuse me. Uh, that means it gets a plus one to its attack. It comes into play unexhausted, so ready to attack. And anything it damages in either attack or defense gets killed automatically. Now also, the Corruptor and the Constructs all have this Veil attribute. It's not printed on the card yet, it's in the rules. But I just put a token down so I don't forget. Alright, so you can target these and the, um, the Constructs, which I will show you now. Uh, with spells or anything, with, with uh, uh, abilities or uh, rituals. So uh, let's take a different one. So, so there's basically um, two different constructs times two. And what these are, they are basically just uh, units. These are all considered units. This is a 2-2 unit and this is a 3-3 unit. And they also come into play with life tokens on. And this one with two and this one with one life token, which just like with the nodes means that I have to kill it first. So that means deal damage equal to its health. And then I can remove one health token, but it stays in play. And then the next time when there's no more life tokens left and I kill it again, then it is removed from the game. All right, so that's what they are. And every time, uh, I kill the Corruptor, it moves out of play, and it loses the leftmost token, and that will move to the node it was in front of. And then that node will give any new card that is played in front of it that attribute bonus, so either a plus one and or a zealous and or reaper. So that's something to keep in mind. And then it goes out of play, and any time I kill an Acolyte card that is in play, the Corruptor immediately takes its place. Takes its place. So, kill an Acolyte, Corruptor comes into play, kill the Corruptor, leftmost token gets moved to the node, it moves out of play, and I place a Construct card from this deck into the place where the Corruptor used to be. Now, if I kill a Corruptor and I remove that from play, nothing takes its place. So that's an empty spot, which will get refilled later. Because at the start of the enemy turn, and it always takes the first turn, you always deploy two cards, if you can. So that's two new Acolytes. Uh, if that's not possible, you deploy one of them. 
And if that is not possible, if all the spots are taken and you can't deploy any new cards, then I have to remove the top card of my deck from the game. And you want to avoid that because once you get through your deck and you can't draw any more cards, then you need to destroy your own sanctuaries. So every time you need to draw a card and you can't, you have to pick one and destroy it. So that will end the game quite quickly. So that's also something to remember. All the enemy acolytes, uh, the attributes and abilities are ignored, except for the ones that also the Corruptor has. So that is a Veil, Zealous and Reaper. That's the only attributes you need to take into account for the enemy. All the rest can be ignored. So to finish off the setup of the game, you take the first Construct card, put it into play in front of the middle node, and it's exhausted. It comes into play exhausted, just like any unit that doesn't have Zealous. And this one comes into play with one life token on it, which it says on the card. So I just put that on the card. And um, I draw four cards, which is my starting hand just like in the regular game. All right, so this is my starting hand, and now you're all set up and ready to play. Okay, so let's start. So first of all, the enemy starts its turn, it always starts, and it starts by deploying two acolytes. So I can, of course, because there are still two free spots. This one comes into play, doesn't have Zealous, so it comes into play exhausted. This one comes into play, and this also comes into play exhausted. So I now have two uh, units with two attack and one defense into play. I ignore this ability, even though there is uh, an attribute with a, an ability on both of these. It's not one of the ones that I just mentioned, so uh, I get to ignore them. All right. Then all active units will attack, which right now we can't, which is fortunate because I'm completely undefended. And then at the end of the enemy's turn, I activate all of its units. So those get activated and that's the end of the first enemy's turn. So now it's my turn. And you always gain two essence crystals at the start of your turn, except for the very first turn in the first round, you get three. So I get three essence crystals. So then my summoning phase starts and I can check my hand to see what I have. So let's see, this costs two, these cost one, and this one is free. And I want to decide which cards to play where, either in my attack position or defense position. And as you'll notice, the enemy only has one uh, row, so they both attack and defend. Okay, so let's see. Right now, this is the strongest card in play. And these, well, these two have Reaper. This one has an ability, Genesis ability, that uh, the Genesis attribute, which triggers an ability, I should say. And it tells me to uh, give Reaper to all my units until end of turn. Well, these already have Reaper. And this one cannot attack this turn because it's not zealous, it comes into play exhausted. So it will only apply to itself and it has a Zealous, so this will attack and have Reaper during the first turn. So I want to kind of take advantage of that. So I could play it here and attack with it and, you know, take away that life point. But then it would get killed uh, itself as well, which doesn't have to be a problem. So I could play it here. And then let's just take these onto my hand. And I could also, and that would cost me two of my crystals. I'm just going to put them out on the table for now before I decide what I really want to do. Um, then I can choose either one of these if I want to spend all my crystals. And this one just uh, has Reaper, but it has a health of three. So it's pretty good in defending against both of these uh, because they only deal two damage and it only deals one damage back. But since it has Reaper, it will kill them. So I might want to place it here or here in the fence because it can't attack right away anyway. So it uh, doesn't really matter where, it doesn't really matter. They're basically the same. So I could place it here for that one crystal. 
And then I have these left. So let's see. So basically I could also play this one here instead of this because uh, let's see, unless I want to keep this, this has a permanent reaper. Well, yeah, might be better than a one shot reaper. Um, so um, this one is free. Um, so let's see, I'm going to hold on to this and I could play this in also in a defense position. And if I put it here, it just will get killed by that one. But if I put it here, then these two will kill each other. So what will happen then? I could attack with this, taking away that life point. It will get destroyed. And then the next turn, this will attack the sanctuary. But there's not a whole lot I can do against that. But it does have six uh, Aegis points and it deals three. So it will survive. And I guess that's the best thing to do right now. And then this will attack and they will kill each... No, this will be killed, this will be alive, and they will kill each other. Um, so that does mean that I am not going to be able to remove something from play right now in this first turn. So that also means that on the next turn I cannot deploy any new Acolytes for the enemy and I will lose a card, which is very unfortunate. Hmm... Do I want that to happen? Well, you know, it's either lose a card in the battlefield or lose a card here. So I guess that's kind of the same. So, okay, I'll, I'll do as I put it on the table here. So I pay my three crystals. And these come into play exhausted. This has Zealous. And I will attack with this. And it has Reaper until end of turn. So it deals lethal damage. To the construct, the construct, the basher, bashes my resolute shaman for three damage and they kill each other. So this goes away, but this stays in play and this gets discarded. So that was my attack phase. Uh, nothing else triggered right now. My sanctuaries aren't active yet. So at the end of my turn, I activate all my exhausted units. So that makes them able to defend the sanctuaries. I advance the Splendor, so now, like I said, I advance these onto the Splendor icon, and this goes onto spot one on both of these. So now this is active, and that will trigger at the beginning of my next attack phase. And this one will gain me two crystals if I choose a unit during my attack phase, and if that unit gets destroyed, I get two crystals. This one, when active, will have me uh, search my deck for any unit, not a ritual, but a unit. And then I can take it into my hand and shuffle the deck. And this one uh, has me double the damage of any unit um, that I attack with. So that could be handy. The weaker units, uh, you know, could be uh, toughened quite a bit to uh, kill a stronger enemy. All right, so that was uh, the end of my turn. Now I get to draw back up to my full hand. I can also discard cards, but I don't want to discard this one. So I simply draw um, three cards. So now I have a hand of four and that is the end of my turn. So now it's the uh, enemy's second turn. I cannot deploy any Acolyte, so I unfortunately have to pick the top card of my deck and put it out of play. And I can't watch, I can see what it is. It's just out of play, all right? So that was the deploy phase. Then all units that can attack will attack. So all three are attacking. And like I said, these kill each other. So this goes into the discard pile and so does this. This deals three damage to my sanctuary and this deals two damage to him and he can take it, but he deals one back with, well, which, which is enough, but even uh, if it wasn't, it's got Reaper and this one is also destroyed. So that's pretty nice. And then at the end of the attack phase, uh, it's the end of his turn and he activates all the units that he has. So now what also happened, I managed to destroy two Acolytes during the attack phase. Now whenever an Acolyte gets destroyed, the uh, Corruptor comes into play. Since I destroyed both of them simultaneously basically, I can choose where I put him 
So let's say this one has the Reaper and well, it does deal three damage and now it's four actually. So it will kill this guy, but you know, at least the Reaper will get him out of play instantly again right away. And this is undefended and this is also a stronger sanctuary. So I might want to put it in play here and it usually comes into play exhausted like any unit, but since it has Reap, um, zealous, it comes into play active. This spot stays empty because I only have one corruptor to put into play whenever an acolyte dies. All right. So now it's my turn again. I gain two essence at the start of my turn. Uh, then I can do my summoning phase. So with two essence, let's see what I can do. I have to make some choices here. So let's look at my my units. So this unit, um, when in, brought into play, this is the Genesis uh, attribute, it deals one damage to all enemy units in its lane. Now there's nothing here. These two are stronger than one damage, but that damage remains until the end of turn. So if I attack with something that is weaker than, uh, than the amount of damage they have by one, then that could make the difference. And that also happens when it is destroyed and it has veil, so it can be targeted by any spells or abilities, but since the enemy doesn't use those, veil on my camp is basically not very useful. So then we have this guy, we already know what he does, and we have this guy, the Pilgrim of the Gorge, which is a 3-3 creature with an ongoing uh, ability. And it either gets plus one when placed in attack position or uh, plus one health in defense position. So let's see if it gets plus one in defense, it's four and this only deals three. And so does that, but this spot is taken. So I kind of want to put it here. In defense position so that next time when this construct attacks it will kill itself because it deals three damage I can take that and deal three damage back so I guess that's something I want to do but this costs two and that will spend all my my summoning power so uh, my essence is spent but I think that's the best way to go because there is no um, enemy here so this won't get attacked unless the next acolyte I bring into play has uh, zealous, but we, we shall see. I'm, I'm going to take that chance. So, okay, during my summoning phase, I'm, I am indeed going to play this here and I pay those two crystals. And then it's my attack phase, but I don't have anything to attack with. So that's over. And uh, well, I, you know, I don't have anything to attack. So this ability I can't use. Then at the end of my turn, I activate all my exhausted units. I advance uh, the Splendor tracks again. I discard cards if I want to, and I draw back up to four, and there we go. So now I have a card right here that is a 4-2 creature, and when I bring it into play, I gain one essence for each other unit on my side. So I could possibly earn back some or all of that cost. Okay. So that was my turn, back to the enemy's turn. This time I can, fortunately, deploy an Acolyte. And even if I can just deploy one, uh, then I don't need to discard anything. It comes into play exhausted. It's a 3-2 creature. And that's it basically, because I, I ignore that ability. Then the active units attack. So this one attacks and this one attacks. This deals three damage to it, which has four. You know, let me just put a plus one. I created a couple of tokens myself to make it easier to remember. So it can take that three damage and it deals three damage back. And I destroy the construct. Hooray. Whenever a construct leaves play, nothing happens. So uh, that's good. That spot stays empty. So uh, for the next Acolyte. And then the Corruptor itself is also attacking, dealing four damage to this poor little mocking hunter, but I deal one damage back with Reaper. So even though one damage is enough to kill it, Reaper will. So I kill it anyway, and this, this leftmost token is then placed onto the node. 
and then this node will give anything placed here a plus one in attack bonus and then it flees from battle and only to return later when an acolyte is killed so that was the attack phase all the enemy units get activated and it's back to me i gain two crystals at the start of my turn again my summoning phase well i only have the two crystals so i can't summon this one this is a ritual that will give any of my units so one unit uh, plus x health where x is the number of units on my side and well we've seen these so let's see i could deploy both of these um let's see so we've got a 2-1 creature and that deals one damage but that's too weak for that had this been a one health i could have destroyed it by bringing this into play and that is pretty cool um so i don't know if i want to do that if i want to play this right away this is a 2-1 creature with fierce and reaper so that would kill this one easily so let's see what to do but i could also take advantage of the fact that these are now undefended oh no actually <laughs> i made a mistake since this one left play i have to bring a construct into play now this was over here so the construct enters play here and this happened during its turn so it came into play exhausted but gets activated at the end of its turn and this one was also uh, destroyed so that leaves play so this is actually the current situation excuse me so now um, this one gets a life token it's another one of those bashers so now that changes things i can actually play this here but i can't attack right away with this so that's not very handy so that doesn't help but i can play this one and that will cost me one crystal and it has fear so i could attack with this straight away killing it with the reaper and it would get killed and i could also use this ability to gain more essence crystals so i think i'll do that so during my summoning phase I will pay one crystal to put this into play here and do i want to play something else oh, it's a shame i'd like to play this because it's cheap on the other hand this costs three and i have one i can gain two so i'm gonna hold on to that i'm gonna use this ability at the beginning of my attack phase and choose one of my units and if that unit is destroyed during the attack phase i gain two so i i'm just going to put two crystals on it to remind myself of that and that's uh the start of my attack phase so now this one is attacking it's dealing uh, two damage to this one but it has reaper so it's going to kill him anyway this deals four damage back to it it's utterly dead i gain those two crystals this is destroyed and this life token is also gone because i have taken one life from it all right but this will attack on its next turn deal four damage to this but this is still at six so okay i can take it um so maybe i should have played this in defense position anyway but uh yeah we'll we'll, we'll see how that turns out i can use those three to put a stronger unit in that spot so then at the end of my turn i activate any exhausted units i advance the splendor again so now all of these are active which is good so i can use all of them i can discard any cards if i want to but i won't and i can draw back up to four and i'm getting this guy and this is new as well so this is the whisper of the peaks acolyte it's a 2-1 creature which uh, gives units on its flanks plus one health uh, until the end of turn when it comes into play so yeah okay but it is free so now we're back to the uh, enemy the enemy will deploy one acolyte so that is a creature that comes into play exhausted but it has reaper but it's only one strong so this is a good example for where i could use this ability and then just kill it once i play it so that's nice 
I think I'll do that on my next turn. So this comes into play. All the units that can attack will attack, so that's pretty bad because I don't have any defenses here. So this deals one, two, three damage down to one. This deals one, two, three damage down to three. And then at the end of the turn, it will activate all this, these units. So we're back to me. I'm at the start of my turn. I gain two essence. I've got my summoning phase. Now I have plenty of uh, essence to uh, put everything in play, actually. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like I said, play this here. So that costs one and it will deal one damage to this unit, all units in its lane, enemy units, and destroying that. But unfortunately, it can't attack, but at least I'll get rid of this Reaper guy. Then I might want to play this one. Where shall I play it? I want to defend my sanctuaries now. And I'm gonna see. So this, these both deal three damage. Uh, this is four actually. So wherever I put these, they'll be killed. <laughs> and that is unfortunate. Um, this deals four damage though. And I'd like to get rid of the construct first. Because when I get rid of the acolyte, the corruptor comes into play immediately. Uh, but this only has two health. So if I put this in defense position here, they will kill each other. So that's not bad. So I'm going to put this here for free. Yeah, I'm just going to pay this and then play this. So this deals one damage to this unit. This goes away. This is destroyed. And the Corruptor comes into play during the summoning phase. And yeah, that's it. When this comes into play, nothing else happens. And then I'm still in my summoning phase. I'm going to play this here. And that would cost me three to play. But upon playing, I gain one crystal for each other unit on your side, which is three. So I get those three back immediately. Okay. So now that was my summoning phase. Uh, my attack phase, I have to skip because I cannot attack with anything, but I can use some of these abilities. So this ability tells me to use the, at the beginning of my attack phase, I may search my deck for any unit. And if I do, I take it into my hand and shuffle. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna look through my deck because I would like to have a unit that can, let's see what's, what's gonna happen next. I'm going to activate all my units. This guy is going to try to deploy. I'm going to lose a card. Then all of these will attack. These will kill each other. So that's an empty spot. This will deal three damage to this, which it can withstand, but it's got Reaper. So it's going to die anyway. This will deal lethal damage to that. It's going to go away again. Construct comes into play. This construct will get stronger. And the Zealous token will move to the node. And since I've already have the 3-3 three, three constructs, these two are both 2-2 two, two creatures. So this will be a 2-2 two, two construct with Zealous. And this will be from then on a 4-4 four, four construct, which deals 5 damage. But 4 is still good. I can still kill it with 4. So it will die when it attacks. So when that is gone, then another Acolyte will come into play on the next turn. I might want to have something that can deal, well, that can attack right away. So I might be able to attack a node. Let's see, so what's handy? This is free though, it's also pretty good. This also gets me a crystal when I play it. And it's a 3-1 creature with Zealous. I might want to get that because it's a pretty strong creature and it can attack right away. Um, let's see, this one activates units, which is also pretty good. So you can play something and then immediately activate it. Oh, I could also have summoned my uh, champion. Let's take a look at that in a bit. Uh, 
did I want to do that before I started my attack phase? Because this can attack too right away, because it's uh, zealous. And because it has fears, it has to be placed in an attack position. So this would actually simply kill that. You know what? And this deals four damage. Do I want to put it there, perhaps? Get rid of the construct. Get rid of the acolyte. Yeah, I think I want to get rid of the construct, otherwise it will get stronger. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. So I played this during the summoning phase for three. So now I'm at the start of my attack phase. I'm still searching my deck for a card. I'm still going to do that, but this changes things a bit. Let's see. I still want something that attacks right away. I'm, I'm trying to hang on to the Reaper ones. Mm, let's see. Yeah, I think it's either this or this, right? And this is pretty strong. This gives units Reaper until the end of the turn, all of them. So I'm just I'm just gonna grab this one into my hand. Okay, I'll shuffle my my deck. All right. So that was the start of my attack phase. I could pick this one if it dies, I get two crystals, but I wasn't planning on having that killed. So that's pointless, but I can have a deal double damage, which is also plenty. Um, so this one is attacking. It's dealing four damage, which is lethal to the basher. This deals four damage back, which it can withstand. So during the attack phase, the construct is destroyed and then nothing happens. All right. End of my attack phase, start of the end of turn phase, I activate all my inactive units. Unfortunately, now I have a nice defense line. And then I could discard cards again, and I draw back up to four. There's no more advancing splendor to be done. And that is it. Okay, so it's uh, back to the enemy's turn. So the enemy can, fortunately, deploy an Acolyte. This comes into play exhausted. It does have Reaper and Veil, and it gets plus one. So it's a two, three creature right now. Um, okay, so that was that. I don't have to discard a card, fortunately. Then all the active units will attack. So this attacks and this attacks. It gets blocked. So the three, two creature deals three damage to it and it's killed but i deal two damage back which is enough to kill it as well so this is destroyed this is destroyed and simultaneously these this attacks deals three damage plus reaper ah oh, plus reaper <laughs> to it I, I thought i would survive but i don't but i deal three damage back which is at least enough to kill it as well so this leftmost token gets moved onto the node so now all cards in front of this will have uh, zealous and this is destroyed so both of these have been killed and the corruptor leaves play again so whenever the corruptor leaves play i've placed a token there and a new construct comes into play exhausted but in this case it has uh, zealous so it comes into play unexhausted completely active <laughs> and any other Constructs would have gotten a plus one plus one token, but they're already gone, and this was also destroyed. So we're good. And then at the end of the turn, he activates all units. So back to me. I gain two essence. I can now start summoning again. I've got three crystals. So let's see. I Again, like I said, I would like to take advantage of the fact that I can now attack this. So this is why I took this one. And I also have this one, actually. So let's see. We have a Hammering Brotherhood, which is a 1-2 creature, but it gains plus 2 for each unit on its flank. So it could be a 3 or even a 5-2 creature. That's pretty cool. 
and it's ongoing. So if I put this in defense, it's a pretty strong defender, but it only has the two health. So let's see. I'm going to want to place one of these two into the attack position on the left. And if I place this one into play, then all my units get Reaper until end of turn. So then if I attack with those, oh, this also has Reaper. Do I even want to attack with my champion? <laughs> I'd kill it, but it would get killed as well. And if I let it attack on the next turn, it would also die. They would kill each other, which I think is preferable. <laughs> preferable. Um, so I'm not going to attack with this, but I am going to attack with this. But this will kill him anyway. These will kill each other anyway. Oh, I did forget to put two life tokens on this when it came into play. But at least it'll take away one of those life tokens. So let's see. So the Reaper effect isn't really that important right now. So I could still hold on to this. So I am going to play this here. That costs two. And I think I'll put this in the defense position then. Over here. Because then this will survive, of course. And then when this attacks, deals two damage. Oh, I only deal one back. No, it gets plus two for units on its flank. So it will deal three back and kill it. So this is also one. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to pay all of those Essence Crystals. Put this one here, put this, this one there. I gain one back from placing this. So that's good. Still have one left. <laughs> so I could actually buff this one with the spell. And keep it alive. And I think I will. So if this attacks... Deals two damage. And... It takes two damage. Yeah, so I'm gonna pay my last crystal to put this on this card. And this will give him plus X uh, health until the end of turn for all units on my side, which is five. So she has now uh, a total of six health. All right, I'm just gonna put that there. Total of six health. That was my summoning phase. Um, this will attack and this will attack. He's not going to attack because of the Reaper. So I'm dealing two damage to this construct and I take away one life point. Uh, it takes two damage, but that's fine. This is discarded anyway. It will survive. And I deal three damage to the node, which is undefended. So this is gone. That's one node down, two to go. And that is basically my attack phase. Um, nothing got destroyed, so I don't get any crystals. I can again um, check my deck for a card. But I've got plenty right now, so I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna draw back up to four and activate all my cards. I'm getting pretty good cards anyway. So these are all activated. No splendor to advance. And that's the end of my turn. So now we're back to the enemy. The enemy can and will deploy. An Acolyte comes into play exhausted. This is gone. So then it will attack with all its active units. This attacks and this attacks. This deals two damage to my Panda Bear here. Killing it. Nope. Yes, yes, it is killed. But this deals three, three damage back. So I do take away its last life point and this is dead this is still in play this one deals two damage to my poor hoarder of the den here but i deal four damage back so i kill it as well and also i have reaper but uh, they're both dead so this goes away and this goes away having killed an acolyte the corruptor comes back into play but it's not active because it has lost its reaper uh, it's um Zealous, which is over there. So that was the end of its attack phase. And now it reactivates all units. And that was the enemy's turn. So back to me. I gain two crystals. 
I get to summon things, only two crystals, so I cannot play the Hoarder, which is uh, sad and unfortunate. Hmm, now, this is just damage. What does this one do? So this one gives all my units Reaper until the end of turn. Hmm. I need to put some things in defense because the enemy has three units that will attack. Destroy this sanctuary. Deal two damage. Not destroy that yet. This is four damage. This will also be destroyed. So I do need to either get rid of these somehow or put something in defense. Let's see what happens when I attack. This kills that and vice versa. This kills that and vice versa. So that's good. <laughs> and this kills him and vice versa because of the Reaper. <sighs> and then the Reaper will move there, which is pretty bad. So things will have Reaper here for a while anyway, so I might as well just use my champion. Um, let's see. This one is free and it's a 2-2 creature. And yeah, I could place that anywhere. This costs three, I can't afford that. And this costs two, well, I think I'm just gonna play them um, because I do want to have some protection and I'm gonna play this one here and this one, no, I'm gonna play this one here because that will, there will be a construct there and this one here. Okay, so that's two that I pay, this is free all my units have Reaper this turn and, well, there's no units on this one's flank, so nothing happens there. And this one is a free ritual that choose any of your units, that unit gate deals... Oh, this is actually pretty good. This deals damage equal to its health to any enemy unit. I could do this right now during my summoning phase. I could pick this one to deal five damage to the Corruptor and it would be gone. Nope. They have Veil, so I can't use it. <laughs> I can only use it on this one. That is also pretty bad. No, then, then it's pointless playing that. That's a shame. So, I guess, you know, attacking this is pointless because there is no node anymore. So I might as well just have these attack each other. So, right. Let's just go and attack with everything. So this kills this Acolyte, this kills him. I've used this <laughs> to put, put it on this one. Doesn't really matter, this is gonna die anyway. So this goes away, this goes away. An Acolyte leaves play, but a Corruptor is already there, so nothing happens, I gain two Crystals. This one deals two damage, this one deals two damage, they both die, but at least a Construct is gone. This one deals four damage, this one deals four damage with Reaper. So again, they are both gone. My champion is out of the game and he is leaving, but he's leaving behind the Reaper attribute onto this node and he runs away. Wow. <laughs> so that was the attack phase, end of turn. Uh, I'm again, not gonna search my, well, maybe this time I should have because um, there's not a whole lot left here. But yeah, let's just see what happens. I reactivate and I draw back up to, oh, that's good, it's two free ones. Couldn't have it any better. So that's pretty good. End of my turn, start of the enemy's turn. Now I've got plenty of room all of a sudden. So uh, yeah, um, the Corruptor left play and it was over here. So this last construct came into play here exhausted with Reaper and a plus one uh, attack. So now this comes into play zealous and this comes into play exhausted. All right, attack phase, this one attacks. Oh boy, that's bad. Three damage to my sanctuary and my sanctuary is destroyed. 
So that's the first sanctuary I lose there. But hope is not lost. End of its turn, it activates all its inactive acolytes. And then it's back to me. I gain two crystals. Let's see, what do I want to summon? Well, now I can play the Hoarder. And I have some free ones that I can play. So I might want to play this one in defense position for free. Because that will kill this one and that will kill it back. I might want to play this one. Actually, if I play this here and then I play this one, this will be a nice disposable defender, but this will activate any unit. I could activate this and use it to attack and kill that one. They'd both be dead. Then the Corruptor would come back into play and the next turn it would attack this guy, which would only deal it one damage, which is not a whole lot. But I still have this to kill. No, I can't. Can't use that on the Corruptor. <laughs> so poo, I don't know if I want to play that into this spot. Hmm. Let's see. I can use the spell to kill that one if I have a unit that is strong enough, but I don't. All of them have two. All of them have two. <laughs> Unless I also attack with something. But is it that important? I just need to, you know, block it every time. Hmm. And... Oh, this has two life tokens. I keep forgetting that. So, I could also play this here and activate it with this one, have it attack, kill each other, and then on the next turn it would attack that and again they would kill each other and then those two tokens would be gone at least. And I need something here. So if I played the Hoarder in this spot, it would be able to attack on the next turn because this will attack him and survive, right? Yeah. So I might want to put this here actually and put this here. Let's see, is this a good choice? So play this here, play this here, activate this one and play this here. This will block that guy and kill it. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. So that's three crystals. And if I play this one last, so actually first I play this, then I play this, activate that, play this one last, I get four crystals. So I pay three, I get four back. So that's plus one. These are inactive. And then that is it. I do not have any units that have four health that I could have used to kill that one. But I guess this one is gonna take one for the team. So uh, yeah, that was my summoning phase. Okay, attack phase. I am going to say, I'm gonna put two crystals on this card. I could actually have one do double damage. Oh, I forgot about that one. I could have killed that. But it's not that important right now. No. So attack phase. This one attacks, deals two damage. This one attacks, deals three damage and Reaper. So I get those two crystals. This is destroyed. One token is gone. Okay. So then that was my attack phase. Okay. Exhaust. Uh, I'm, exhaust my units, activate them again. Um, and I'm gonna draw back up to four. So I'm gonna have a car with Reaper. Uh, they, these are good, nice big creatures that are good in offense and defense. And I get this guy, which is a free 2-1 Eclite. All right, enemy's turn. He cannot deploy a unit, so I lose a card. Okay, then 
everything attacks. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This one kills my cunning instructor and it only deals two damage back. This one deals three damage to my hoarder. It deals four damage back. They kill each other. I've destroyed an acolyte, so the corruptor comes back into play. Zealous. And this one deals two reaper damage to it, and I deal two damage back. Three, actually. But uh, they both die, so this token gets removed as well. And that's the end of its turn. Reactivates these units, and it's back to me. I gain two crystals, so now I have plenty of crystals, but... Uh, Pretty low on health here. So let's see. I can play this. Oh, this still has the Reaper. So I want to play something that's expendable in the back, but still be able to kill it, which would be this one, basically. So if I play this here, it would destroy the Unmaker and it would be destroyed as well. And that's zero crystals. Um, so then, you know what? If I play this one in defense position here for two crystals, it'll get a health of four. And then I can use that spell for four to kill that one. Because this I can target. And I could use the one to play that here, because this has Reaper, which will kill the Corruptor because it's down to its last tokens. Hey, that is great. I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna pay these two crystals, I'm gonna pay that one crystal, and that one is free. Hmm, interesting. So now, do I attack or do I not attack? This only deals one damage. That's not enough. So I may want to keep that to attack the node later. I am gonna, however, use this ritual and I'm gonna pick this one because that has four health right now, because it's placed in defense position, and that will deal four health to this guy. This guy goes away. Corruptor is already in place, so nothing happens there. So, attack phase. I'm not gonna attack. Uh, oh, actually, yes, I am. Hmm. No, no, I want to have it kill itself on the Mocking Hunter. There's no more Consarch. This one get will get stronger, but that's okay. Um, is that okay? Because if I use this to have it deal a uh, unit deal double damage, this will deal two damage to the Corruptor, and then the Corruptor will leave play. Well, this will get stronger then anyway, so it's gonna happen. So better to have it happen on its own turn. I guess. So right, not attacking, and then I'm activating my units, and I'm gonna draw back up to four. So there's not a whole lot of cards left here, so I'm gonna have to be really fast right now. I get a ritual again, that's nice. So that's the end of my turn. The enemy can, oh god no, not another one. Put this one into play, exhaust it, and then it will attack with this and with this, dealing three damage to him. Reaper deals one damage back. So this is dead, but also the Corruptor. Corruptor is now destroyed. Hooray! When the Corruptor leaves play, I place a new construct, but they're, they're already gone. And this one gets a plus one, plus one token. Um, but this has an attack, so this attacks for they attack simultaneously, so this doesn't happen until it is destroyed. So this deals two damage, didn't really matter, but it did matter for the damage that I'm doing, so I'm doing two damage, which is enough to destroy this. So even before the Corruptor would have a chance to boost this construct, it's dead. So I've managed to get rid of all of those, but this is dead as well. So pretty fierce battling going on here. So then it activates all its units. Back to me, I gain two Essence. Uh, I'm going to summon something that can attack right away. Oh, did I win? I'm gonna summon this here for two. 
and that is zealous. Yes, I believe I did. I'm just gonna play this ritual for good measure on that guy. Boom. This is gone. And I attack with both of these. Oh no, wait. I'm not, I'm not there yet. So, is there something I need to remember? There's nothing that comes into play. Just these. <laughs> Interesting. So, I think... Well, this is Reaper. So I'm going to play this here for one. So that anything that attacks there, and it is, it's zealous, it at least protects my sanctuary, whatever happens. And I also want to protect this one, because if the enemy damages a destroyed sanctuary, I have to discard a card, which is not good at this point. So I'm going to hold on to this. And these are attacking. Nothing's going to die. I don't need to do double damage. I remove this health token from the middle node and this node gets destroyed with all the tokens on it. So that's good. End of my turn. Activate my units and I draw. Now it's pretty dangerous. I draw back up to four. Now, I've drawn two cards, but I can't draw my fourth card. So I'm not 100% sure because I was able to draw, but not all of my cards. So the rules say if you can't draw any more cards from your deck, you have to destroy one of your sanctuaries. So I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to play it the way I think I'm supposed to do it and destroy the sanctuary. That was not giving me any benefits anyway, but that means I have to defend this with everything I've got. So that was my turn. Then the enemy. Now I've got three free spots, so I guess I get to choose where I put them, I think. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna put the first one here, because this is defended. I'm just not gonna play an Acolyte there, so I'm gonna play one here, which comes into play exhausted, and here, which is also exhausted. Because had I played one here, it would have been active, it would have attacked, undefended, against the destroyed um, sanctuary and then I had to discard a card which I don't have and that means I had to destroy this sanctuary and I would have lost so yeah so the end game is always pretty tight I've played this at least six times now I've lost almost all of them I think <laughs> this is the first time I'm recording this that I have a chance at winning I feel but uh, yeah you really have to pay attention and it always comes down to the last turn in my experience. So this is pretty tight. Okay, so again, let's see. These came into play. Nothing can attack right now. Um, and then I uh, activate the enemy units. So then it's my turn. And then I win. Because then on my turn, I can basically just skip. I, I take two crystals. I can skip everything and attack, destroy this sanctuary. And that will be the end of the game. So you see that during the last turn, you really have to pay attention, especially to these tokens on the nodes, because they will give your enemies certain abilities, you know, certain attributes that can be deadly. Especially the Reaper and the Zealous ones, those are, those are deadly. So that's basically a playthrough of a solo game of Sanctuary the Keeper's Era. And I've played the uh, Wolran, Molran versus the Crass. And of course, every deck has a different strategy. So if you pick a different deck to play with, the game will be different. If you pick a different deck to defend or to have the enemy play, that will be different because you'll have different attributes. You can ignore the, uh, the abilities. And, you know, and there's also, because both of these boxes have different bosses. So... Uh, the Lands of Dusk, which I just played, which has the Crass, the Molran, and also the Wool, has the um, Nenzath, the Soul Defiler, right here, with uh, the Unmaker and the Basher, which does not have the art right now. You can check the teaser of the art at the Kickstarter page. And um, so this is, this is in that deck, that box. The other box will have a Hydra boss, uh, which you can also see on the Kickstarter page. And it will have different stats and do different things, and it will have different constructs as well. And if you, of course, 
get the Kickstarter box that has all six decks into the one special box, you'll have all of these. So that's pretty cool. And like I said, you'll also have actual node cards with art on them instead of using the backs of these cards. And you'll have uh, nicer tokens, of course. This is just a prototype. So it's a pretty tight game. And I, I really had to pay attention to what I was doing or I al almost made a fatal mistake and, uh, you know, lost in that last turn. So I hope I didn't make too many mistakes during this playthrough. Uh, I have recorded this a couple of times before and I did make some mistakes. So I decided to just play again until I got it right. I've put these uh, rules, the condensed rules, on Board Game Geek. I'll put a link in the description as well, so you can download those if that is handy, if you want to have that during your playthroughs. And uh, I'd like to thank all of you for watching, and also Tabula Games for asking me to do this uh, playthrough. It's been a lot of fun. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a uh, thumbs up. And uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you hit the bell icon, then you'll also get a notification every time I upload a new video. So please do go and check out the Kickstarter and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.